shalom, welcome and love from love, hope from hope, and peace from peace. It is our Lord of always who has the best names like those. So it's time to light a candle for hope, who he is, our Messiah who shall return. And know that the candles and the lights always reveal the light of hope which burns ever so brightly, especially in the darkest of times. We must make like little children, put on our Mickey and Minnie uh, apparel. And we have to realize it doesn't have to be a world of fears and festering tears no more. So if we will light a candle of hope in the darkness, then we can look at how a sing single candle can both defy and define the darkness, and the darkness has covered all mankind, Isaiah 60 says. And God says in Isaiah 25 that a veil has covered all the nations of the earth, all mankind. And it is written in the latter days in Micah 4 that our son of righteousness would arise with healing in his wings, and his hope can never fail to satisfy our, our most desperate needed, uh, needs. <laughs> we have needs and we have wants. He fulfills our needs. And a candle of hope lit, lit in someone else's light, lest us never forget, will definitely brighten up our very own life one day. It's depositing to the bank of goodwill and at Christmas time, we must have goodwill flowing as a river. For love is the season for the reason for the season, and love is Christ's name, the secret name of Mark four, the name to which every knee will bow, every tongue will confess the secret name of Christ. And so, in this hour, it is time to realize that the flame of hope should never go out from our lives. And hope uh, from each of us can have a life with peace, love, and faith. And the flame of a candle always dances with joy and hope in order to enlighten us, which means our falsehoods falling away. And if you hear the Kingdom Age covenant message of Malachi 3, one which alone prepares his way in this world for he who is the good shepherd over all the flocks of man, John 10, for he who is the God of all mankind, Jeremiah 32, 27. We have forgotten that because that God in this world doesn't hardly exist, maybe with Baha'i. But one thing for sure, our Lord of always is our majesty of majesties and our hero of heroes, icon of icons, and he is our star of stars and our star of Bethlehem, the truest one. So the flame of a candle will always dance with excitement and joy and passionate, fervent ones at that, because there is no such thing as uh, being a follower of love and not be passionate to that love uh, if your love is unconditional. It's very easy not to be passionate about conditional love, and that's why people lose their zest in life. So this Christmas time, do something, make an action. Actions speak louder than words. Do something out of unconditional love for anybody, because the least, what you do for the least of the kingdom of love, whom we should all be uh, beings of love, but we get so twisted as we practice committing blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, letting our love uh, Christ in us die right out, then we would only be a castaway, castaway into the outer darkness of lovelessness where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So it's time to become the light to help others shine and to light their wicks and pass on Christ's light to all around us and know that thousands and thousands of candles can be lit from one single candle and happiness never decreases at all by being shared. So I call on all people to start liking uh, these videos from the messenger of God, the, 
the messenger who would restore all things, the messenger that is trying his best, doing all in my power to try to, to get these videos out. And I've got a bunch of assholes watching my videos that refuse to take a minute to like anything that I've ever done. And without somebody out there liking some kind of shit that I do, the message of God's love can never get out. So people are totally apostate that will not share these messages. Because in the, the this dark, dark hour of the bear of Daniel 7, 5, hearing the words, now you may go eat all the flesh that you would like. People, we are about to, all of us, go underground. Uh, the kings, the rich, the poor, the Bible says that in three places. The prophecy, why? It's a nuclear winter time. Because Ze Zechariah predicts battles of slaughter where eyes consume away. Zechariah 14, 13, something like that. Uh, eyes consume away in the sockets, tongues consume away in the mouth, and flesh consume away as we stand. That is our future. And any asshole not liking videos about peace and hope, you're friggin' nuts. Because the, the truth is, I am one with stammering, shocking, scorn, friggin' lips. Because I'm preaching to a bunch of hard asses out there that wouldn't know Christ's light uh, within anybody. Because they're fucking blind as a bat. So hope is uh, a candle that lights and guides all of us through the darkness if we will follow the light of love. But no one not liking uh, these videos are fucking following Christ's love anywhere because you don't want to share Christ's love with anybody else. And you're selfish and you're time to tune out. Go to more officials line. He'd love to have you, the revealed lawless one, the sword swallower off freak show, who is a freak, who would be dying by a sword in Revelation 13. These are the days of Dr. David O'Hara, who repent and prepare the way, who has called down fire in front of multitudes, uh, Revelation 13. These are the days of Shias, of House of Beloved, the revealed woman of... Uh, Revelation 12, and in her days, Satan is removed because he used to be the accuser of the brethren. Uh, the lawless one has been revealed. Uh, Satan has been put away if you could believe the truth of the Bible. And in these days, the Lord is now removing the rebuke of all people of the earth, as it is written in Isaiah 25, off his latter-day mountain covered with food, who will come and feed the master's household meat and food while the master is away, he said of Elijah, me, Daniel, uh, and uh, Matthew 24, 45. And from off this latter-day mountain, he's removing the veil that's been covered over all people as his message of Malachi 3, 1 comes forth to prepare his way. And that message is the written word of God, unadulterated, uh, untwisted with yellow journalism, switched identities, the son of Esau. Early Christians grabbed all the Hebrew books and said, we are Israel, and all the prophecies were us. <laughs> But in Jeremiah 31, 1, in the latter days, God would be the God of uh, Israel and all families of Israel, which means I am their God, they are mine, and I am theirs. That's what he meant when he said, that I am the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's what he meant when he said, I am the God of all mankind, but that was stricken. And the early Christians uh, eliminated the true um, addressee of the blessing of always. You see, that covenant was never given by God. He did something clever. God says, now I will give you the words, and in the latter days, the message would come. It says so, Jeremiah 31, 1, and it says so, Jeremiah 32, 27, the correct recipients. And so in this hour, it is time to realize more than ever that all the darkness in the world can never possibly have any chance of extinguishing the light of even a single candle. And so it's time to light a, uh, better to light a candle than to curse the darkness for the, the, the brightness of the light gets rid of the darkness anyways. We don't have to curse anyone standing in darkness because all of us have been in the dark. And so it's time to light a candle. 
And so light that candle and let it shine. And there are only two ways of spreading the light. We can be the candle or we can be the mirror that reflects it. But I know this, the light that was reflected from the east is now being reflected back to the east from whence it came. And a much brighter light is it because God always saves his very best for last. And so there is a time of celebration. There is a time for uh, people to be excited. And this is a time of jubilee. The jubilee of jubilees and the great celebration has come. And so at this Christmas time in uh, the year 2022, as we get ready to uh, enter a, a brand new year, let us hold up the candle of the Lord's love to be a light in the nations for all people. And so it is time for teaching of the absence of love. And this must go again to all people, to all tribes. And back when Emmanuel was first coming from that point, down the road to utopia's euphoria of the rising kingdom age of unconditional love through his most loving example their, for, their coming firstborn jesus bar joseph would later on express to many multitudes that without love a man's heart is parched and cracked as a bottom of a dry well and his words are empty as a hollow gourd but he would emphasize that loving words are like a honeycomb that is always sweet to our souls. And so it is time that uh, the Lord, uh, he knew as the pre-existent Christ, he knew that he would then be teaching after his coming, he would be teaching those with hearts of devotion, and hearts of love, words of such adoration uh, are become uh, in our mouths as deep waters, as a wellspring of love. It becomes as a flowing brook. And so it, it was therefore written into the happiest hearts of the stars of God, shining in the brilliance, reflecting the divinity of Christ the Lord, that our Lord of faith would eventually become like an acorn, growing well under his stepfather's tree, Joseph's, Joseph's tree. And common sense told the angels who even declared the Lord's first coming to the shepherds in the field that the that uh, those uh, that any foggy mist will hinder uh, our journey, and that's why the Lord wants no one to look through a glass darkly anymore. In these days of revelation of revelation. Even the revelation that Israel has inherited all mankind, Jeremiah 32, 27, declares that God is the God of all mankind and Israel has inherited them because the covenant has been given to all mankind at this blessed Christmas time. And because of that, all people are now his. The mystery of God is over of Revelation 10, 7 because the first is last and the last is first. And the glory of the Lord's latter house is greater than that of the former. And so is it that uh, in this hour, the Lord has named Israel Chrislam. The Bible says in Isaiah 62 too, that God would appoint them a new name in the latter days if he was unable to do that through Elijah, through Shiloh, one whose eyes are red and dull of wine, one who holds the scepter of all of his kingdom, age, authority, of love, unconditional. Uh, that in this hour, we must realize that any foggy, uh, distortional understandings around us uh, will hinder uh, us. And so therefore, the Lord has determined that the gross darkness would fade away in this earth and be blown away by the pleasant breath uh, and the breeze of the breath of God, which he would surely be.
begin blowing in this hour. And once that giver of good values eventually came into his own, he was also destined to see great love in both uh, the eyes of both his earthly mother and father. Thus Mary and Joseph, before their births, were chosen and set apart, just as I was chosen to be Shiloh, the latter-day Daniel of Daniel 12, 13, who would arise to embrace his destiny am I. And no one fucking believes it. So frig off if you can't take a joke. <laughs> I am the biggest joke. Uh, you could read about me in Zechariah 3, covered with barf. Uh, I'm the one transgressed by wine, but the just will live by my faith. Because you know what? Uh, even though my eyes are red and dull of wine, and even though uh, I hold the scepter of uh, God's authority anyways, because I am Daniel, that is Shiloh. Shiloh was given the name Shiloh. I thought Shiloh was Jesus all my life. Mistaken identity, because uh, it's speaking of the end time revelator, and it was never Jesus. And uh, the Jesus doesn't prepare his own way with his own message. He has a messenger. That, and what is the message of Malachi 3 1? I'm your God. You're my people written correctly to Israel and all mankind. Hello! Is anybody alive? Does anybody got a brain to fucking realize that it's all win win for everybody concerned? <sighs> Anyways. Mary and Joseph were chosen and set apart to become excellent examples that they were born to be. And by studying their upright ways, our Lord of Kings and our King of Lords would also be guaranteed to become the blazing flame of God that he always was since the beginning, before the beginning even. And whoever would be drawing near to him would feel his most fervent fire being fanned by the most gentle wind of God. And the voice of our Lord, the Lion of Zion, is roaring as loudly as a little itty bitty kitty's teeny weeny whispering tiny purr. Because it's not by power nor by might, but only by the spirit of blessedness and the spirit of love that all things upon this earth will do a Mickey Mouse turnaround. And that is an exciting thing. So I turn the hearts of children to their parents by telling them, kids, you got to have a uh, love that's in spite of kind of love, through it all kind of love. That's love. If your love is shallow as a glass of water and it's conditional, you got no love at all. For conditional love is, is, is uh, if and but or why. Uh, you love people. Why? because of this and why and so it's phony love unless love is loyal and faithful committed and dedicated that's all the same thing love is forgiveness forgiveness is love people why does the way into hell paved by our conditional love where we practice trying to do the unforgivable sin as we end up in the land of the walking dead having a form of godliness but denying the power of love who should be Christ the Lord living within us large. And so our Most High additionally ordained that his consuming fire of love and blessedness would swiftly be devouring multitudes of hearts in these days of this flying scroll of Zechariah 5, this everlasting gospel of Revelation 14, being read on camera by Elijah, and unless all the friggin' assholes of the world will uh, start sharing these videos, God will condemn you if you keep watching this channel and you will not like uh, that which is feeding you. You are a hypocrite. You keep coming back for more. You want more, but you don't want no one else to have more of God's blessed news that he says unto all people, I am your God. You are my people. I have forgiven your iniquity. I will never remember it. I will write my law and my love upon your hearts. Beyond that, none will ever even need to be taught of me. For all people of the world will know me, from the least to the greatest, who have their love alive, who have, uh, have love like a child as a verb, who haven't committed the unforgivable sin. Those people never get saved. They are saved. End of story, I am Elijah. And so in this hour, our Most High additionally ordained 
that his awe-consuming fire would devour many, causing them to be filled with his flickering flame of faith, hope, and unending love. And during his adult ministry, such grateful souls would then gladly hear that forthcoming charismatic son of man telling them to let all those pressing in to do something very special, to take a time to stop and smell the roses, uh, reevaluate who you are. If you won't like these videos after I've been pleading for months and months, get the fuck off of this channel. Just let me preach to the white noise. I've been used to it because no one wants the friggin' truth. I have eyes uh, red, dull, and wine. I, my lips are scorned and, and uh, stammering, shocking lips. Isaiah 28, line by line, precept by precept, has the strong and mighty one come forth as a destroying storm, uh, even as a hailstorm, to pull down distortion alleys. For Jeremiah is the only important prophet for the kingdom age. Jeremiah 1.10, Haggai 2.2 2 says the same thing, that he was using Jeremiah alone to tear down all kingdoms of man's imaginations, not built solely upon the Lord's unconditional, revealed unconditional love, which has always been unconditional. Every Christian watching me has a false God. They have a God who is a respecter of men, loves them best, and no one can tell me otherwise. It, that is a sinner God. It is a sin to be a God by God's own word. He would not break his own word. And they have a God of uh, conditional love. And conditional love has never been divine. Conditional love. What happened to he whose mercy endures forever? Because he's patient and kind. And the false God of this world is not the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible is Jeremiah 32, 27. I'm the God of all mankind. Erased. Christians became the God of the Bible. <laughs> they made a God in their own image. One that has... Uh, conditional love, one that has pharisaical uh, respecter of men kind of uh, attitudes, and one who isn't the good shepherd over all the flocks of men. That Christ doesn't exist in this world. Fuck off. No one has that Christ except Chrislam. Isaiah 62 2, Israel's new name because they have now inherited all mankind. And whether you fuckers like it or not, all faith is now obsolete. Hebrews 8 predicted it. When you hear, I am your God, given by Elijah, the messenger of Malachi 3, 1, that prepares Christ's way, it's done, like dinner. And the mystery of God of Revelation 10, 7 is over. And if this message is not fucking shared, he cannot fucking come back at all. Not at all. Acts 3.21 says he will be kept in reserve in heaven. And instead, because you're obstinate and you won't like these fucking videos and you don't want no one to know the truth except you, that you don't even really believe and yet you keep coming back watching more and never, no one has liked me except love the light red ready for years because you're all fucking hypocrites. And so in this hour, Christ would gladly be stressing that they should do everything possible to let their souls exhaust themselves in his praise, uh, exulting with love. But that altogether perfect governor would also be really cautious to let people know that they should also love every aspect of God more than themselves, while not loving anything or anyone except for his sake. And if we cannot love even our enemies, we cannot love a God that we can see, cannot see, if we can't love enemies that we can see. Uh, and so in a little while, before the curtains of life fall, uh, I come forth as Shiloh with the good news that the Messiah is right behind me if people will obey the word of Jeremiah 30, 24. Most important word in the Bible says this, and it shall be considered in these latter days that the Lord says, I will return my fierce, terrifying anger and stop the chaos if my people of love will be more loving, like Daniel's videos, says God. <laughs> and love one another as I have loved them and do love them. Ah, uh, people, people, people. It's written in Isaiah 49, 4, that I would do everything in vain. And if you've, uh, hearing me ask people, 
uh, to please like these videos. I've been asking people to do that for years, two years now. No one does. No one will. And so I've done everything in vain. And yet everybody, in that whole chapter, Isaiah 49, is about Elijah, who I am. I've got some big shoes that I stepped into. But the Lord gave me open-eyed visions. 30 years I've known my identity. And he trained me and he hid me as an arrow, a sharp, double-edged arrow. He hid me in his quiver. And that's no Mickey Mouse business, I'm telling you. And because he knew in the latter days Christ would arise as the rider of the, rider of the white horse. And he would have a long bow just for me. And so later on, when it came time for that inferno of his most fervent adoration to come forth and to finally explode upon earth's trembling stage, that young couple from Nazareth would evermore be remembered all throughout history, even up to these modern days, even up into a 999 years within the kingdom age that has begun according to God's word. And after all, people um, need to realize that both uh, Christ's mother and father were anointed by our great I Am to be the kindling, the kindling under his only begotten son who would be faithfully teaching us that through the living word of love, God made the heavens, he formed the earth, that which is in it, and he set bounds to the sea that it should not pass. And in these days, he is shining forth the sapphire sea on high, the sea of love, of the forgetfulness of his forgiveness. And that is a bottomless blue crystalline ocean of the flowing faithfulness and the, the blessedness that only the magnificence of his beneficence can bring for he is the majestic lion of Zion. And so in this hour, uh, it's time to realize that when he spoke the little words, let it be, he created he the deeps and the fountains that they should spring forth all over the earth and flow and earth's enlightened children would see that love has always made the world go round keeping it suspended up high in the heavens by the word of god's everlasting might uh, and his softest whisper nor would that holy couple ever be fated to leave it all uh, behind for when the lord was just a small boy uh, they would someday be teaching him that love brought forth the day. Love brought forth the day, the night, the sun, and the moon. Love brought it forth, and he established it well. That is the pre-existent Christ, whom Jesus was, the living word who spoke all of the stars into existence in heaven, that always separated the brightest light from the darkest kinds of darkness. And at the very same time, they'd be sure to give that babe of Bethlehem the utter gospel truth. And the gospel truth would always be that love is the answer to all of our problems. And nothing more than love will save this earth one heart at a time. And so our son of righteousness, uh, he called forth a hell within a twinkling of an eye back then. And a hell is for all that will keep their love light turned off, who want to be cast away into outer darkness of lovelessness. And he additionally ordered the rain, the winter snow, the hail, the ice, and he kept the days within their ordered seasons. And neither would that couple ever fail to explain to Christ that love even made the world, a uh, whole world to quake and to establish it again. Uh, and that love's word of creation created man in his own image. Fearfully and wonderfully are we made into his peculiar priesthood. All of creation has been groaning with great expectation for the revelation of who we are so we can stop playing Mickey Mouse games. We are angels in the flesh, that is what we are. The Bible says we will be as the angels, neither male nor female in the afterlife. That's why. And the Bible says the first are last, the last are first. 
we were created last because we have a higher shining. And uh, the devil, we will look down upon the devil, that little puny heretic in, in the pit, and we're all going to say, is that the little weakling that shook the earth? <laughs> and so people have always been destroyed by their lack of knowledge. And I am the no Mickey Mouse guy from the north, Isaiah 41, coming at this Christmas time. And neither would they ever fail to explain to Christ that love even uh, changed everything that mankind ever imagined. And it was a very sure bet all throughout his brief life that his folks, while uh, Joseph was alive, would be sure to call their firstborn Jesus their love. Enough times that he could never forget that he held that blessed name of God's greatest charity, which would, uh, that which would ever give uh, this fallen race hope. So it's time that we stop being rattled and scarred by our own bad ways. For um, among people, there is no good person, not even one, Romans 3.10. But if Christ is alive in you, you would like my videos. But Christ is not alive in you. You serve a false God. If you cannot like these videos, fuck off again. And through that amazing love of the eons, enlightened souls would evermore comprehend that men need to be strong and wise in their love. Jesus would assert many cautions as well, because for a little opposition, Christ was careful. He would always be careful to teach that unthankful hearts, people that will not like these videos, could fall away from their undertakings easily because they're as shallow as a glass of water. They have no fervency, no passion, no depth. They are lifeless and they are clinging on to these videos like a life raft and they won't share their life raft with nobody fucking else. They keep watching. I got at least a dozen people watching all the time and none of them will say hello. So fuck off or say hello. How's that? Uh, so it's time to eagerly seek after the consolations that the Lord is giving to all of us. But the Lord would also give instructions that if anybody was steadfast in their love, they would like these videos. And then they wouldn't be tempted to give in to their strongest temptation not to like these videos. And they would never dare not to like these videos because they're going to be kissing their own ass goodbye early, very possibly. Because unless the world embraces the message of Malachi 3.1 that prepares Christ's way, his way is not prepared and he cannot fucking return. So if you like Jesus, you want Jesus, I ex expect you to start fucking liking this channel or just fucking go away and never watch me fucking again.